What's up guys, Erroneous with another Raid Shadow Legends video. I wanted to go over the new Guardian Ring. I know there's been a lot of mixed emotions with people these days, like, talking about the Guardian Ring. My Guardian Ring is, as a free-to-play player, it's not great. Uh, so here's what mine looks like right now. Banner Lords have got only four dupe rares, two dupes and high elves, because honestly, most of my rares I'm using for food, so I do have six of the sacred orders though for epics which is nice and then two 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 across the board no rares um, here I do have demon spawn so I do have a couple of legendaries in, in this one here in lizard men I've got two rosins of course which boosts them by 10% I was thinking of crunching my rosin and empowering my my main rosin but I think I'd rather do this the guardians thing first so I can empower my entire faction I think I'd rather do that for now as you know I don't spend money on this game at all so I think if you're not a spender it's best to just go into the faction guardians and try to upgrade each of your factions as high as possible now I do really like this you know I think this is great and then I just don't have a lot of rares that I can empower obviously you can just go and farm certain stages of campaign get these these champions here but um, I don't know it's just not something that I'm gonna go for right away unless I'm really struggling on certain factions or unless maybe I want to try to do something fun uh, like maybe if you're trying to go for those secret rooms and you're having troubles on certain rare secret rooms where you have to use a bunch of rares or void rares what have you then yeah this would be great um, I think this is great in general content as well especially if you're trying to speed up your runs and and help progress in the game I think this is huge so it really just depends where you're at in the game and then my last one I have demon spawn here as well I have two legendaries uh, two Drexthars of course so there's that I was thinking of also empowering my Drexthar but I'm not sure yet I think I'm gonna again do the same thing here with the with the demon spawn guardians and then I also have what was the other one Ogren the orcs I just realized I have two Tila Gourmains. <laughs> so, of course I pull a dupe Tila on a free-to-play, you know what I mean? That's that's terrible, but now I'm thinking, hey, maybe I'll empower my Tila Gourmain with another crappy Tila Gourmain, you know? Get crazy amounts of HP, and uh, she has, a I think, a plus 0.2 multiplier. So, not crazy, but um, I don't know. I, I personally don't think she hits crazy hard but maybe when she's empowered she does okay damage and then where else do I got some good stuff going on nothing really honestly my faction guardians is not that great now going on to empowering again if I wanted to try to empower I do have you know two rosins two Tila and two Drek stars but I'm just gonna not do any type of empowerment for a while uh, I want to beat all the factions and then maybe look into empowering my champions just because I would rather benefit the entire faction right now instead of benefiting one champion that I'm, I don't typically use all that often. Especially Tila, I don't use her anywhere on my account besides um, where I use her. The Spirit Keep, I think that's the only place I use her so she can do heal reduction and stealing the large shields from the Spirit Boss and that's it. Uh, other than that, I don't use Tila anywhere. And I'm not sure if you guys use Tila at all, but comment down below if you use Tila Gourmet whatsoever. And then, honestly, empowering champions. As a free-to-play player, I have a very mixed review on this because you can upgrade your faction guardians. You get stats from this, so if you're really trying to progress in PvP, it's difficult because the whales... And the Krakens, you know, people that just pay to play are now way, way, way above uh, where any free-to-play players are going to be. So PvP, honestly, I've never truly been really fussed about PvP because I know this game is pay to, pay to win. And a lot of people like to pay to play this game. And that's totally fine. It's just that I never truly felt like, oh, I'm going to be getting platinum today. Or, oh, I'm going to get out of bronze or, or I'm actually going to get into silver this week for, uh, what do you call it, Tag Team Arena. 
you know, that, that's not my initial thoughts. I have to do that for one of the missions. I got to get into a Silver 1 Tag Team Arena, which is also very difficult because we have teams that are in Tag Team right now that have over 220k team power. Um, so it's difficult for a free-to-play player to get into Tag Team Arena Silver 1. Comment down below if you guys have reached into Tag Team Arena Silver 1. I haven't yet. I'm going to be trying to push for it, but I don't know if I'm going to be able to just because it's all a speed game in Arena. A lot of people are low spenders, so low spenders are going to have an advantage over someone who doesn't pay money at all in this game like myself. So it's, it's difficult. Now, I also think it's annoying because empowering champions, you can only empower legendary champions. So that's kind of an issue for me. As a free-to-play player, they, if they're going to allow you to empower champions, it shouldn't just be legendaries because that's strictly for whales. That's strictly for people who are paying money. Like, yes, it's for free-to-play players, but when? Two years from now? So when I get four of the same legendary in two to three more years of playing this game, I can finally empower one champion. But by that time, there's going to be, what, how much more content is going to get added to the game? How many more champions are going to be added to the game? Um, it's going to be just a little bit outrageous. You know, it's going to be saturated with these champions that are going to get, over time, stronger and stronger and stronger. And then you're going to see more power creep, right? So eventually they're going to make champions probably that are stronger than times two or times three empowered champions. I really, truly think Playroom will do that. Because how else will they get the whales to stay and the krakens to stay? Free-to-play players will continue on for a while, but if next year they bring the PvP into play and it's true PvP, this game is going to take one step forward, but it's also going to take one step back. Because people that can empower their champions are going to be way stronger. But we already know, here's what I'm already saying for myself is, I'm not so worried about PvP. The whales are always going to win in this game, no matter what. So I'm more focused on dungeons, you know, getting my speedruns faster, collecting champions, because that's the whole point and reason why I play this game. So if you're someone who just is so worried about getting into Platinum, then I guess I can understand why you'd be a little bit frustrated from empowering champions. Because honestly, you're not even facing anybody that's real in Arena. And I say that's real, I mean like you're facing AI. You're not facing the actual person. They're not playing you. You're playing their defense. And the, the defense is preset. It's not a true PvP. It's just more of a, it's more of a flex type of game, if, if I'm being completely honest. And I personally take pride in, in upgrading and developing my champions to the point where I can actually defeat and beat someone who maybe pays to play. Um, and if anybody pays to play and I beat their defense on Arena, you know, that's what makes me happy that I'm, I'm actually upgrading my champions on my own and doing things on my own and not having to worry about pay, paying money. You can play this game just fine without having to spend a dime. Yes, things take longer. You know, but but that's the whole point of the game. The whole point is the grind, right? I love these types of games because you grind, 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 and once you succeed, you get so much excitement from winning. And once you win, it's like, there's no going back from that, right? So empowering champions, I don't like it because you can add on the guardian empowerment and then a times four. So you can literally have a times four and then add more stats and it just becomes even crazier. So in total, so say I have this rosin that upgrades to a plus four. So now you can do faction empowerments, faction guardian empowerments, and regular empowerments for them. So like my rosin, if I empowered him to plus four, he'd have like 60, 60k HP, and then like 8k or six or 7k defense, crazy crit damage, crit rate, you know, it's like, it's kind of incredible. It's nice to think about, but again, I'm not gonna reach that. A free-to-play player is not gonna reach that. So for me, empowerment of champions is kind of a, a D. I'm gonna rank it a D because no free-to-play players can really truly upgrade that much. I have seen a few in Gold 4 where they're plus two, plus three. And that's going to start to get crazy soon. And it's only been what? It's been out for a week? Uh, not even? And people are already in gold 4 with plus 2 and plus 3 for empowered champions? So in the future, maybe next year, 
I don't see them doing it. Maybe it, maybe they do it on their next patch, 5.0, but I heard that they're going to be adding um, a gold 5 and then 500 people to platinum. That's kind of crazy still. I think they should be adding 1,000 people or 2,000 people to platinum and then they should extend platinum so it has platinum 1, 2, 3, and 4 or platinum 1, 2, 3. It shouldn't have a, a gold 5. So are they going to add a, a silver 5? Are they going to add a bronze 5? That personally to me is only going to work very short term. Um, again, they should have just extended out platinum, gave lesser rewards in platinum on the lower tiers, gave higher rewards on higher tier platinum, keep the top, top, top 0.00001% Krakens at the highest tier of, of platinum. And then allow people who have pay played this game for two years or, or longer to be able to even scratch the surface of platinum. Like we can't even, no, we can't get into platinum. People can't get into platinum. No normal person that's free to play or a low spender, low spender, is going to be getting into platinum ever. And if you have, leave a comment down below. I just don't think that's ever going to happen. Um, at least not for another two years. Maybe, maybe a year if you get lucky. So... Again, empowering champions, not that great. I would give it a I would give it a B plus or an A minus for empowering champions if they added epics and rares. Um, obviously, nobody really cares about uncommons and commons. It would have been cool to be able to empower them as well. But um, adding epics and rares to empower champions, I thought that was going to be a thing. That's another reason why I don't like this portion of the Guardian Ring. Again, love what they did here. I love what they did here. This is amazing for everybody. Sparring pit's always been the sparring pit. It's going to be the same. Empowering champions is a little bit of a letdown. It's mainly for whales. Then you want to go to unbinding champions. Unbinding champions, this is another kind of a letdown. Uh, yeah, sure, they gave us 500 tokens. What is it? Life tokens? Yeah, life tokens. And you can empower, unbind a champion to get specific champions in the token trader. So like Foley would be kind of cool for me to get because I have a Foley, I only have one. But I don't even have six legendaries that I can crunch. Duplicates, I mean. I have three duplicates, which doesn't even make sense. I wouldn't even be able to get the worst one on this list, which is Manaya, And she's not even that good uh, for a legendary champion, in my opinion. If you think Manaya is really good, you can leave a comment down below where you use her, how often you use her. But I don't see people using Manaya all that often. So personally, like I wouldn't. I have a Tomb Lord. He's good. I think he's a decent champion. Foley's very good. Fushian's very good. Sir Nick is pretty good. Uh, but again, I wouldn't crunch eight legendary champions unless I was a whale or unless I was a kraken. Which I would. I'm not spending that much money on this game. Heck, I don't spend money on the game. So it's never going to happen to begin with. So for me, Unbinding Champions, if, if this would be good, they could make this good if their life token count came down. I think Manaya is only worth maybe three, three Unbinded Legendaries. Tomb Lord, maybe four. Foley, maybe four. Four for Molly, four for Fushan, and maybe five for Sir Nick. I don't think it's worth eight. Uh, unbinded legendary champions that's crazy now overall I mean I I love that they brought this to the game I think it's a step in the right direction and I think this is gonna be helpful for everybody no matter what so like I can complain all I want about empowerment and unbinding champions but in reality it's not going to affect me like it's not gonna affect me playing my PvE it might affect me in tournaments and you in tournaments and events or, or sorry just tournaments when you're facing people because there's going to be people who empower their champions and they're going to be faster and you're maybe never going to hit a rank one two or three potentially to get uh, the better uh, rewards but personally again I'm never going to come out of gold four I might be able to get into gold five but I'm never going to come out of gold four into platinum anytime soon I have seen a couple of plus twos here and there. I don't see any here, but I have only seen a couple of people so far that have been plus two. Here's a plus one, Lydia. So that's a really good team. 
and I'd probably, maybe I might win, I might lose. I probably would lose against this team. 256k team power. Could my Arbiter potentially be faster than this person's? It's possible. I'll just show you right now. But this Arbiter is probably faster. Wow. I'm very surprised that the Arbiter is not faster. Honestly, I'm very surprised. So that means that this person maybe spends a lot of money, but doesn't actually, like, I'm assuming they don't really play, like, really truly collect gear and stuff. So maybe they spend money on the game, but they don't spend money on gear. Who knows? But, um, I have a decently fast Arbiter, I would say, for a free-to-play player. So my Arbiter is at 329 speed, which is decent. It's respectable, I think. And she could use improvement. I mean, her masteries aren't fully done. I just have Laura Steele right now. Um, she's got some decent stats. But again, like, most of the teams that you're facing in Arena, if they have a plus two, plus three Arbiter, you're not going to beat them if you're free to play and you don't have a plus two or plus three Arbiter to compete, unless you get lucky. That, honestly, I feel like is lucky that that per I, I'm surprised that that person wasn't as fast as me or faster. But yeah, so what do you guys, tell me what you guys think about the Guardian Ring down below. If there's anything I missed, feel free to leave it down below. Again, I like the Guardian Ring and I like what they're bringing to the game and what they're trying to incorporate. I just think it's leaned more towards the whales and people that spend money because the people that are spending money are probably getting bored and maybe leaving. Um, at, at this point, they're just doing clan versus clan against each other to get mediocre rewards in my opinion. But hey, it is what it is. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please leave a like if you like this video. Subscribe if you haven't already, and thank you so much. Take care.